Hello everyone, welcome back to another session in the industry and more. Today we have a malignant condition which is known as malignant melanoma which is a neoplasm of epidermal melanocytes. So epidermal melanocytes which is one of the most biologically unpredictable and deadly of all human neoplasm. Okay, this is a very deadly neoplasm and which is very unpredictable. This malignant melanoma which is the most or the third most common cancer of skin of skin after basal cell carcinoma and squamous cell carcinoma of okay. K. This is about skin. So earlier it was believed that melanomas develop in nevi, especially the junctional nevi. But now it is thought that the lesions which were interpreted as junctional nevi were in fact the pre-malignant melanocytic dysplasias. Okay. So melanocytic dysplasia. So before it was thought to be a junctional nevi, but now it is understood that it is a premalignant melanocytic dysplasia. So certain lesions considered to be premalignant melanomas are the acute nevi, dysplastic nevi, congenital nevi, and cellular blue nevi. So Coming to the etiological factors, the uh, environmental factors are sun exposure, artificial UV, sources, socioeconomic status, fair skin, red hair and number of melanocytic nevi. All could be the etiological factors. In genetical factors, the familial melanoma, familial melanoma and xeroderma, pigmentosum. Okay, the risk factors of oral melanomas are unknown basically. They have no apparent relationship to chemical, thermal or physical events to which the oral mucosa is continuously exposed. So there are two phases in the growth of a melanoma. That is a radial growth phase. Okay, first one is radial growth phase. Radial growth phase is the initial phase which may last for many years and the neoplastic process is confined to the epithelium okay in radial growth the neoplastic activity is confined to epithelium only and the second phase is the vertical growth phase okay vertical growth phase which begins when the neoplastic cells populate the underlying connective tissue and in this phase so connective tissue what happens there will be metastasis so that is the two types of uh, growth seen in malignant melanoma that is uh, radial growth and vertical growth okay so we have four types of uh, melanoma that is the first one is superficial spreading type superficial spreading melanoma Second one is nodular melanoma. Third one is lentigo maligna melanoma. And the last one is the acral lentiginous melanoma. So the clinical features of superficial spreading or SSM is which exist in a radial growth phase called premalignant melanosis and it present as a tan brown black or admixed lesions of uh, sun exposed skin especially the back side and vertical vertical growth phase is characterized by increase in size change in color nodularity and also ulceration in nodular melanoma which is nm no clinically recognizable radial growth phase and existing solely in a vertical growth phase only the vertical growth okay and it present as a sharply delineated nodule with a decrease of pigmentation maybe pink or black which is known as uh, amelanotic melanoma amelanotic melanoma so amelanotic melanoma is 
nodular melanoma due to the its pigmentation it appear as a pink or black which is known as amelanotic melanoma and predilection for occurrence on the back and head and neck skin of the third one lendigo uh, maligna melanoma or lmm which exists in a radial growth phase which is known as lendigo maligna or melanotic freckle of hutchinson okay melanotic freckle of hutchinson and occurs characteristically as a macular lesion on the malar skin of the middle aged and elderly caucasian more common in women okay so this is more common in caucasian ethnicity and women okay in malar region so the last one or the acral lendigo melanoma which is developing on the palms and soles as well as on the toes and fingers which is characterized by macular lendigous pigmented area around a nodule they are extremely aggressive with rapid progression from the radial to vertical growth phase so the following criteria which helps in clinical diagnosis okay clinical diagnosis we can go for a a b c d e rule so a is the asymmetry b is border irregularity border irregularity c is color irregularity color irregularity okay d is diameter and e is elevation so this is the a b c d e rule in clinical diagnosis of malignant melanoma in border irregularity with blurred notched or ragged edges and color irregularity pigmentation is not uniform black brown red uh, tan white and blue can all appear together diameter greater than 6 mm growth in itself is a sign okay so that is the a b c d e rule asymmetry border irregularity color irregularity diameter and elevation whereas the oral manifestation it is twice as common in men than in women most commonly it is seen in 40 to 70 group age group predilection for the palate and maxillary gingiva palate and maxillary gingiva and uh, it appears as a deeply pigmented area at times ulcerated and hemorrhagic which tends to increase progressively in size and oral melanomas exist in superficial spreading acral lendigous and nodular types and histologic features we have malignant cells often as a nest or cluster in groups in a organoid fashion and they have large nuclei prominent nucleoli and show a nuclear pseudo inclusion and radial growth phase of superficial spreading melanoma is characterized by presence of large epithelioid melanocytes distributed in a so called packetoid manner which is known as buckshot scatter okay buckshot scatter buckshot scatter which is nothing but the presence of large epithelioid melanocytes distributed in a packetoid manner so when melanocytes penetrate the basement membrane a host cell response develops which destroy the tumor cell and vertical growth phase is characterized by proliferation of malignant cells in the dermis okay and the nodular type is characterized by large epithelioid melanocytes within the connective tissue and tumor cells may invade and ulcerate the overlying epithelium and penetrate the deep soft tissues whereas a lendigo maligna which is characterized by increased number of atypical melanocytes moving on to the treatment and prognosis 
The surgical excision for cutaneous lesion should be performed when lymph nodes are involved regional lymph node dissection. If tumors are greater than 0.75 mm in thickness and located in the so called band sites that is back, arm, neck and scalp. This is band site. So it have a greater tendency to metastasis. So surgical excision for oral melanoma, jaw resection and lymph node resection should be performed. Women have a much better survival rate up to 50 years and then the rate declines. Nodular and superficial spreading melanoma have a much poorer prognosis than the LMM. Tumors which is less than 0.75 mm rarely metastasis or it could be rarely cause a reason for death and the oral melanoma have much poorer prognosis than the cutaneous ones so that is all about uh, malignant melanoma so we have discussed the various details and the abcd rule uh, various types its histological features clinical features and finally the treatment and bands criteria buckshot uh, scatter appearance so it is a commonly asked essay question so I'll come up with a new topic in dentistry and more. Thank you.